Welcome, welcome. So glad I can be with you today. This is Archbishop Ken McNatt from Global Harvest International Fellowship and King's Pastor Christian Center. I want to share with you some things today that are just some thoughts that are going through my mind concerning the glory of God. I uh, was looking at a scripture and I referred to it recently in the book of Revelation chapter 5 verses 11 through 13. It says, And I beheld and I heard a voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice. Now watch this. When they begin to lift up their praise unto God, they do it with everything that's within them. And that's what we're admonished to do in Scripture, that we do it with all of our heart, all of our soul, our mind, and our strength. David, the Bible said, danced before the Lord with all of his might. Sometimes I'm concerned about the modern day church because it seems we are so lethargic in our praise and in our worship. There's no passion. There's no real push to get into his presence. It's as if we have long forgot the purpose of our gathering, the purpose of our assembly. We do not come together just so we can pass out business cards or shake hands with a neighbor or see someone that we didn't see last week. And all those things are fine. Fellowship is a beautiful part of, uh, of the unity of the brethren. But listen to me. It's much, much more than that. When we come together together, and we call it a worship service, then worship should be the preeminent focus of what we do. And if it is, the glory of God will manifest. But because that is something that we have lowered in not only our understanding and comprehension, but even in our, uh, or in the very essence of its purpose, we, we don't see any demonstration. We don't see manifested glory. That, that's the reason why when you go to a lot of conferences and places like that, they do everything they can to break you out of the mold, everything that they can to break you out of comfort and to move you into a flow. Because if they can get you out of that place of lethargy and lackadaisical Christianity and move you into a place that you begin to push, they know that something's going to happen there that's going to be uncommon. I have people ask me all the time, they say, why do you think it is that in special conferences and crusades, you see a greater demonstration of God than you do in church on Sunday morning? Well, it's simple. When we gather on Sunday morning, we have become so regimented. And I don't want to say this to the offense of anyone, but I'm trying to drive home a point. We have become so carnal. We have become so fleshly. Everything is about the extravagance of the flesh. Everything is about soothing or appealing to the emotions. It's not about true worship of God. It's not about really praising Him. And again, I want to say we praise Him with a push. We praise Him with a passion. We praise Him with the understanding that that is what God pursues. God pursues His own praise. When we begin to praise Him and do that for which we were created, and we do it in the manner that God designed, it's irresistible to him. He can't stay away from it. You know, I remember uh, learning very early in my life uh, about hunting and going out uh, into the woods and, and, and hunting different kinds of, uh, of animals, whether it was squirrel hunting as a boy or rabbit hunting, and then later on deer hunting, uh, things of that nature that we do here in the U.S., uh, different parts of the country. Some people don't like it, but I enjoy it. And uh, when I used to do that, first started doing that, I found out some things that I, I didn't know. I didn't realize how drawn to salt a deer was. In so much that those that understand honey, they would put out salt licks in certain areas. Now, they couldn't do it in a way to where they had brought the deer right under their stand or right under the place where they were hunting from. 
Uh, that that wasn't legal yet. There's some that did it, <laughs> but 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 it was supposed to be. You know, was, they would put these salt licks out, and it would create a magnetism. They would put out corn and things of that nature, and it would attract them, and they would come into that general area. And so when they did that, basically what they were doing is they were baiting the area for deer to pass through. That's what we do with our praise. With our praise, we are baiting the area for God to pass through. Now we know, we know, and I know somebody's going to, you know, they're, you're already thinking. You're saying, but God's with us all the time. Yes, he is. The Bible says that uh, he dwells within us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. I understand all of those things. I understand that we're two or more gathered in his name. He's in the midst. I understand all of that. But I'm talking about another dimension. I'm talking about something that has been absent in the church for the most part. I'm talking about where there is a unified praise, where there is brethren coming together truly in a spirit of unity, offering unto God a praise and a worship that is ecstatic, that is expectant, that is full of, of joy, knowing that what you're doing is baiting the atmosphere because God pursues praise. When that praise is offered up, he can't stay away from it. It's impossible. And the greater the praise, the longer he hovers and broods. The greater the praise, the longer he sits down and makes himself at home in the congregation. And when that happens, there are things out of order that begin to come into order. There are things out of place that begin to come into place. There are things in people's lives that need assistance, that need to be rearranged, that need to be somehow changed, and it begins to change. It begins to happen, not by might or power, but by the Spirit of God. It begins to be demonstrated and manifested. This is the craving and the hunger of my heart. This is what I want to see in the church one more time. I want to see the people of God come together in an unrestrained way where they push away from all of the preconceptions about you worship God like this or you worship God like that or you don't do this or you don't do that. Lay all of that aside and just offering yourself unto God, not only your body, but your mind, not only your mind, but your emotions, not only your emotions, but even the way that you communicate verbally. Your speech is de declarative, if I could use that word. Your speech is declarative. You are declaring the glory of God. You are declaring the majesty of God. And you are shouting it. The Bible said in the book of Revelation chapter 5, the scripture I read just a moment ago, that when this happened in heaven, it affected the earth and beneath the earth, and even all the creatures in the sea. They were all affected by this praise that started round the throne of God and began to swell. It was like a contagious virus that began to infect everything that had ever been created, no matter where it was located. And the more that it grew, the greater the glory. That's what I want to see, because if that happens, when a praise starts in Africa, it'll show up in America. When a praise starts in America, it'll show up in Asia. When a praise starts in Asia, it'll show up in Europe. When a praise starts in Europe, it'll show up in the islands of the sea, or in Antarctica, or in Australia, or somewhere else. But the nations will rejoice because that we have set our heart and our affections on God. It happened in Azusa Street. It happened in other awakenings throughout history as men became hungry and passionate for the glory. And I close with this. D.L. Moody said, It still remains to be seen what can happen with one man that is totally surrendered to God. I love you today, and I thank God for you. And until next time, as always, my prayer for you is, may God's best 